Here we go. The Survey Corps rushing in to interrupt an important conversation. <laughs> Damn, Erwin is so hype. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna get revealed that it's all just people. It was people the whole time. <laughs> Wouldn't be a Attack on Titan episode if Mikasa didn't say Eren. Has anyone ever put together a Mikasa saying Eren compilation? I feel like it would be a feature length movie. Opening. Interesting title. Opening what? Opening a can of worms, probably. It's a little awkward. I like how Ymir's looking at Eren, wondering what he's gonna do. Which means they can't really fight. He seems apologetic. Put up a great fight, though. Weren't expecting Berthold to fall on you. This is really weird. Everyone's looking at Eren. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah. I mean, more importantly, don't you want to ask questions first? And furthermore, we should ask questions. <laughs> yeah, all this is true. And furthermore, <laughs> I like this common collected Ymir a lot better than like, the I'm gonna berate you to show that I love you, Ymir. I also love how Eren is so nuts that the whole scene revolves around him. Like everybody's just looking at him to see when is he gonna explode. Eren is just a force of nature, so much so that I feel like Ymir, Reiner, and Berthold are united just in their fear of Eren right now. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that was a pretty brutal battle. Bertholdt makes the best anxious face. Yeah, there you go. Yes, thank you, Ymir. <laughs> yeah. Eren's speaking for all of us there. I mean, who knows? Who knows? You guys know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, it seems like Reiner's implying there are different kinds of titans. But my assumption when I saw the titans moving at night was that somehow the monkey titan was spurring them on. But I could be wrong about that. I mean, one of the first things they introduced in the show is that there are different kinds of titans. There are different sizes. There are different classifications. You got your, let's say, ultra-powered titans that are human. But the missing piece is why and what that actually means. And how it's connected to humanity. One possibility, I guess, is that it's ethnicity or location related. Ymir bears the name of a certain group of people. The people who speak the language of canned foods. And the normal titans seem to recognize or have some kind of respect for that that group. They're significant in some way to the to the whole thing. It's interesting that Ymir claims not to know that much about it. It could be a lie. Reiner seems to be implying that she knows more than she's letting on. Yeah, there you go. That's super reasonable. Good job, Eren. Sounds like a plan. Proud of him. <laughs> Yes, this is wonderful. <laughs> Good job. Titan regeneration. Probably more important than crackers. I'm loving this ha Hannes kid saga. Aaron's actually doing great. He's like suppressing his emotions and stuff, and he's asking questions. Yeah, what's weird about the situation is, in a way, they, they risk making things more dangerous. It's just more variables, more people to die. This whole thing is a powder keg. He's talking as if he's still on their side. What? Are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Do you not realize the implications of what has happened? He's like regressing to some weird past state. Suppress, Eren, suppress. Something's weird about this, yeah. What is happening? Well, he's got like two different modes. 
That's the three of them. Yeah, they did that. So obviously I don't know about Reiner and Bertholdt's motivations, really. But it was pointed out to me that they were very young when they first attacked the wall. And you can imagine that the three of them believed in what they were doing. Enough so that they were able to overlook the tragedy, which they may not have fully understood anyway, given their age. But the reason why I cling so strongly to my idea that you know, I have to hear Reiner out, is because we've seen enough of him to know that he's not a killing machine, right? Like, he's a good, good guy, and he obviously cares quite a bit about his comrades and friends. So this grieving for Marco, for example, makes total sense. So the, the big question is why? Like, given that he's just a normal person who cares about things the way everyone else does, what would be so powerful, what would be a driving force so important that he would be willing to put up with that and to continue down this path? But overall, I think it's a great thing that he's conflicted. I think we sort of need that. And Eren needs that. Aaron needs to see that. Ymir kind of seems there already, like she's sort of like trying to observe the situation and figure out what's going on. With Reiner, I don't know if that whole thing was like some kind of plot device, but what it seemed like to me is that he's just like cracking under the weight of his life. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously very confused. So he does have kind of a split personality, and Bertholdt's been putting up with this. Ooh, calling Bertholdt a lackey, it hits close to home. Yeah, they should answer for this. Yeah, that's a reasonable thing to say. It's a reasonable question. What could be so important that you'd be willing to put up with this? Yeah, they feel that. Right, right. I mean, he has so many emotions that it broke him. But also, Eren is not wrong. Reiner also has a point, though. Eren is not wrong in the words he's using. They are murderers, they cause a lot of tragedy. But I think part of the reason why he's going here is because this is sort of Eren's thing. He's really good at putting himself in this zone, this zone of like simplicity and hatred because it justifies him acting in the way he wants to act, which is violently. For Eren, it's sort of like in all conversations, in all situations, all paths lead to kill them and you don't deserve to breathe, right? Eren is the ultimate hype man for his own like violent desires. The scene is fun to watch because, you know, a lot of things are true at once. What Reiner and Berthold did was terrible or caused a lot of tragedy, at least. It also could be true that they feel like they had a higher reason for doing that. It also could be true that they are victims, that they were maybe manipulated into doing it. It also could be true that Eren doesn't want to understand, that he just wants to get himself into a state to justify violence. Meanwhile, Ymir, <laughs> Ymir is just hanging out, you know, hanging out, enjoying the show. Remember that time we were gonna control our emotions? Uh-oh. <laughs> I knew it! Damn it! All paths lead to die. Bertolt's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Go figure, Aaron wants to kill. <laughs> Even Ymir. Ymir suddenly seems so level-headed. That's- there we go! Asking questions! <laughs> Do you not know? Oh yeah, he didn't see it. It talks. Yes, it has some kind of influence. He's very handsome. Wait, if they get to the Monkey Titan, that helps them get home? What does that mean? Good question. Yeah, there's a whole other game being played here. There's like a meta game that, that changes everything. Just like mine. And the story of Reiner, there are two things that I know are absolutely genuine. One is the shoulder pat, the Connie shoulder pat. The other is his undying love for Goddess Krista. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> if you put it that way, not so sure. <laughs> Emir knows too, that face. 
Yeah, this is probably more than just romance too. Krista's important, but he also wants to marry her. Looks like she's made her choice. This is sort of a relief in a weird way, and it's very interesting what they're doing with Eren. Eren is the protagonist, right? And for me, ever since season one, I've been sort of like put off by him. But the more I watch, the more I'm convinced that this is intentional. Like Eren is sort of, he's kind of a punching bag here. The show itself seems to have little regard for him, especially so in this scene. He just seems really insignificant here and childish. And even his allies, even Ymir, is pointing that out. There's something very atypical, but very interesting about it. Yep, time to interrupt. That- what the hell? Alright, so again, we get answers in the form of more questions. So what are the takeaways? It seems like Ymir and Reiner have a similar understanding of the world and recognize a similar problem, but perhaps have or had different desires of how to deal with that. But they unite on Krista, who is obviously significant to the larger story and also totally marriage material. They talked about this world having no future, as if there are multiple worlds, or as if, if this world ended, there would be another world to be had, or something like that. And there is perhaps a danger in their eyes to letting this kind of world play out, and that might, you know, explain partly why Reiner and Berthold are okay with the idea of ending humanity, as they put it. It's probably a superficial end, right? It's probably not the true end of humanity, just the end of humanity in some certain iteration or whatever. Reiner and Berthold are trying to get back home, but home might not be what I originally thought. Is it just a hometown, like in the forest somewhere, or is it something else? Because this might have just been a weird translation or me misreading the subtitles, but they talked about needing to get to the monkey or deal with the monkey or something to get home. That is bizarre. I don't know what to make of that. Unless there are like gates or this is a simulation or exists in another thing. <laughs> this seems like one of those episodes that makes a lot more sense later when you re-listen to their conversation. I'm sure there are a bunch of double meanings here or things that are not quite what they seem, but it's sort of hard for me to guess. I can only speculate on what those things are. Character-wise or development-wise, I really enjoyed this episode just seeing their interaction, even though, you know, not a lot of specific information was revealed. I love that Ymir seems suddenly so mature, which is not at all what I thought of her before this episode. Seems like in transforming, she is sort of like accepted a bigger role in it or come to some sort of peace about her existence. Or maybe it's just the fact that she's sitting next to Eren and literally anybody looks mature. <laughs> sitting next to Aaron. About Reiner, although I was already pretty sure that his actions had already taken a, a big toll on him, here we get confirmation of that. We see that he's not doing well. He's not doing okay with this split goal or these split lives. And yeah, who would? What reasonable person would be okay with that? Totally. And it's been pretty well established, I think, that Reiner is a decent, reasonable person. Bertholdt looking stronger too, just by comparison, because Bertholdt, in his quiet way, seems to be just holding things together for the two of them. He's kind of the, the emotionally stable one. And then Aaron, the protagonist punching bag. Aaron is always been a weird protagonist, right? But this brought it to a new level of self-awareness, I think, for the show. I mean, they just made him feel so small and childish and lost in this episode. And predictable, even. Predictable to us and to the characters. You know, like, Reiner, Berthold, and Ymir are sort of eyeing, side-eyeing Eren, like, all right, here we go. When is it coming? Three, two, one, and Aaron goes nuts. And then they're like, just stop. Very different, but I kind of like it. For me, it's always a relief when I detect there's something weird to get acknowledgement that the show is aware of that and that it's a conscious decision, that gives me hope. That gives me a lot of confidence in, in the whole thing. So yeah, that's the end of season two, episode nine. I'm guessing next time the scouts show up, which should be crazy. I'm kind of curious where Ymir will fall now. But before the video ends, I gotta give a very special thank you to all my patrons for all the love and support. Very special shout out to those who joined the top tier this week. Kevin Palafox, Miss E Temple, Eli Lane, Angel Desiree, Jack, Super Chips, Michael Stollard, and HCamp128. Thank you to you, thank you to all my patrons for all the support, thank you to everybody watching. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is ending very soon. I will be doing a Q&A for sure and maybe some extra videos on that series, and then I will announce the next show, so stay tuned for that. Thank you to everybody for watching, love you guys as always, and I'll see you for the next video.